Hi everyone and welcome back. Um, so having um, finished the Hudson Hunslet build and finished Iva, um, I'm trying to work out what I am going to do next. And looking across my um, stock of kits and things, I came across, among other things, this. Now, uh, as you can see, uh, this is still a, a boxed uh, Scarlowe from Batman's Thomas and Friends uh, range. Um, this was actually from one of the first batches, I believe, that came into the into the UK. Um, it's um, kind of um, yeah, they were they were released in the US um, at least partly at the time because Hornby had the rights to the Thomas and Friends um, models in the UK. Uh, that's now reverted to Batman, but I don't know quite what's happened uh, with the release of these. But anyway, um, I bought one of these as soon as it came out. Um, in fact, I bought two because, well, this one, and we can, we can get it out and have a look. Uh, my, my intention was to keep one as Scarlowe, which this one has remained. Um, so it's quite a nice, quite a nice model, uh, nicely detailed. Um, I mean, there's obviously, it's a, it's a, it's a model that kids are going to play with. So it's not, it's not fantastic. There are, you know, kind of the handrails are molded, um, oversized cylinders, Kind of ridiculously oversized to deal with the the kind of um, reliable uh, cylinder uh, motion and things and there's there's things like the cab which is plastic has this whacking great big metal pillar up the middle uh, which means that you can't actually see through the the windows into the cab which is all a bit a bit rubbish um, but you know uh, to you know, in comparison to drawings of Talalin, that this is that, that this that was the basis for Scarlowe in the in the Thomas books, um, it's actually a really good match. There are a couple of weird weird things. Uh, the chimney's not quite right, as I say. I've already said the cylinders are too wide. Um, but yeah, I mean they, they they as far as more where they digitally scanned Talalin and then altered it to better match the the models or, or rendering they were using in the tv shows at the time this this came out um but it, it's as i say it's a really it's a really nice nice model and it runs super well i mean the the, the mechanism is is superb but as I, I mentioned i bought two of these um the intention was to keep one as scalloway um and to convert the other one to be tally lin now i think batman are now doing uh, models of Talidin that are essentially this but without the face um, but um, I got quite a long way with it so there is um, there's obviously numerous bits and pieces to, to, to change to do that um, but it, I got quite a long way with it and then it went in a box and went away and I haven't touched it in ages but what I found this morning was this so there's a money bag with a box of bits there's a Tesco mozzarella pearls tub that has, well, something in it. So I haven't actually looked at, I can't remember exactly where I got to, I haven't looked at it yet. So I thought I'd kind of do a kind of weird unboxing and, and figure out where I was with this conversion. Um, I'll just leave Scalo up here. Um, where I was with the conversion, see what's left, um, and then hopefully in future videos I will move on and do a bit more. Um, so let's have a look what's in the box first. I think I got to the point, having had a peek through the lid, of putting some primer on this yeah I did um, so these are the these are the parts so basically I stripped the model completely down um, to its main to its main components um, and then kind of um, cut them up and detailed it detailed them to um, to match um, the original so as you can see there's a number of things that have changed if we compare just the the chassis between the two um, so you can see that the the crosshead and, and stuff are much finer on here than on the original model so this is uh, narrow planet did a detailing kit which included replacement cylinders um, so there's 3d printed uh, piece for the cylinders uh, which is much narrower and and, and kind of um, better proportioned um, than the the one on the model it's a bit difficult to tell but they're they're a lot finer um, and they did a replacement uh, smoke box door um, if I can get it to focus um, there you go uh, replacement smoke box door um, I also um, cut off the chimney uh, and turned a replacement so it's 
a bit taller um, and um, yeah it's 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 different let's put it that way so that's a brass chimney that I turned uh, turned on the lathe um, has slightly different uh, cap um, and, and angle and things again based on based on drawings um, so what else did I do to this? All right, yes. Yeah, so I I designed a cab interior. Um, it's not very detailed. It's quite rough in some places, but viewed through the the door of the uh, the cab, it doesn't look too bad. Um, tried to get it reasonably uh, accurate based on some photos. Uh, and if I can find them, I'll throw up as we talk photos of both uh, that I used both for for reference um, and what I was aiming for. But I think this is quite accurate with the large wheel and and some um, pipe work with the with the the gauges and the the, the um, stop valves and things. Um, I also replaced the whistle that's on the top. This one's uh, a turned one I bought, I think, from the Three Millimeter Society. Um, rather than using a four millimeter standard gauge one, I used a three millimeter one that's a little bit more suited to. Um, narrow gauge locomotives and this this bracket around it is built up from brass strip um, so it's just a bit, bit all round a bit finer um, you'll also notice that if we compare these side by side I've removed the um, the coal on this side um, certainly on the at, at the point I was trying to uh, repli replicate um, a particular old photos of Tallinn there was only one um, one coal bunker so um, I've I've I milled that off and there's actually a, somewhere there's a piece of metal because on the real thing again there's a cover over this side uh, that hides what's under underneath um, so there's a metal cover for that um, but yeah and um, there was all sorts of little bits and pieces um, I think so I took yeah so there's there's a there's a there's a there's a pipe into the side of the smoke box that's not on the original um, there's a lamp bracket lots and lots of detailing it's a bit difficult to see um, in the primer uh, you can also see that I've got holes in the tank uh, and on the front around the smoke box door there to take wire handrails rather than the molded ones which I've uh, removed um, so that's the that's the board, the main body. Uh, as I say, just a three three D printed with I think some brass overlays um, for the cylinder end cap, ends of the cylinder. Uh, that's from the narrow planet kit. Um, the cab itself, um, obviously the plastic part you can see through the the windows, and you'll notice that I've um, cut the the big supportive metal piece off. So when this all fits together now, it, it fits together fits together nicely um, also there is a uh, lamp bracket on the back um, which again is it matches the matches the prototype a bit better um, but the main thing I did was I went berserk and cut up the foot plates on the on the on this model you can see the foot plate here runs basically all the way round um, well it's the cab floor all the way around with the splashes all the way across the front and round and it's it's essentially one kind of rectangular piece with a hole cut in the middle that slots down over the over the, the, the powered chassis um, but I've actually cut mine into multiple pieces um, so you can see this is the rear um, under the cab that goes under the cab floor so the cab kind of sits on it like like that um, so I've added some bits under the tank um, to give a more rounded uh, appearance um, I think I know they're, they're, they're from the original um, I've actually cut some away I've cut the uh, the splashes and some of the bits and pieces um, away um, and yeah I don't think I've removed much from the back no that's still the pretty much the same but what I did do obviously was separate the front um, and that's because on Tallinn, certainly at the time I was uh, at the, the, the point in history I'm aiming at modelling, um, well, for a start, I only had one sandbox on the front, so you can see I've removed the left hand one and filled in the hole. Um, but I've also removed the running the foot, the running boards down both sides of the loco. So on these, as I say, they had running boards with the splashes, they've gone. Um, so now this fits together 
kind of like that. Um, there's this very thin uh, running board on one side. Um, that it does match the prototype, but it's as I say, it's only on one side. Um, I guess so that they have something to climb up on uh, when filling the water tank. Um, so yeah, so that that should all fit nicely together now. I mean, you can get an idea of how it looks if we um, if we slot on the the cab onto the um, onto the chassis onto the body. Sorry, uh, and that's already looking you know pretty good. Um, I mean, the smoke box door helps. It takes takes the uh, takes the cartoony Thomasy uh, nature away from it. Um, but there are lots of pieces that aren't here because I think they're hiding in this uh, money bag. So if I move some of this out of the way, we'll have a look what's in here. As I say, I've not had this out before recording the video, so I'm not actually sure what I've got. So, all ah, right, so yes, yeah, so we've had um, our team models. I think um, that was a set of, could have been a set of hand wheels and things that I used. I'm not actually sure. Um, but yeah, so three millimeter society, so three millimeter scale railways. Um, these were ordered. So local lamps. So um, I think I've actually already painted up a couple of these, possibly. So these are just the leftover ones. Um, but also the turned, turned whistles. So it's going to be really difficult for the camera to see that because it's tiny. Uh, but there you go, turned brass uh, whistles that I used. So they're just obviously spares that I didn't make any use of. But as you can see, this thing has lots of stuff in it. Now I think. What we've got in here, and I don't want to lose everything, so I'm going to be careful. Are all the bits I didn't need for a start? Um, so you can see these are the these are the original cylinders off the off the loco, um, and the replacements. And you can see how much finer uh, the replacement replacement is. Um, these obviously had the um, slide bars cast into these, whereas on the replacement etch, um, they're fixed the other way, and there are holes in the in the cylinder so the middle one takes the uh the, the piston rod but the um the outside too for the slide bars um so yeah so that's that's that piece um we've got other things that i took off so things like the whack and grab couplings um they may get refitted not sure um so obviously the face which appears i also stripped of paint um but we also have some bits and pieces in here of other stuff so as I say, I'm not quite sure what's in here. Oh, so again, bits I took off. Um, so the uh, crosshead and, and rods and things, because um, obviously they were replaced by finer versions. All oh, right, yes, yeah, so there is some stuff in here that I've kind of finished, so let's have a look. Um, so here's, um, here's the rest of the Narrow Planet detailing kit that I haven't used yet. So again, it's a bit getting the camera to focus, but these are the works plates and things, um, the Teledin name plates and works plates, so they'll go on at some point. Um, but yeah, what have I got in here? Oh, right, yes, yeah, so this, and I'll try not to, as I say, try not to lose any of it, um, are bits that I definitely kind of finished and got ready to put on the the model. Um, so they, they um, so that, this is the, if I can pick it up, this is the plate that goes on the top of where I took the coal out. Um, I've, what I did with these, I blackened the brass so that then if I put paint on top uh, and it got scratched, it was less likely to show the, um, the, the the original brass through. It doesn't work ridiculously well in some cases, possibly because I wasn't so good at cleaning things. Um, so the handrail around the smoke box door. Um, I think this is the handrail for the tank side. Uh, we've got some kind of um, valve, uh, feeding valve, I'm not quite sure where that goes. I think that might go into the tank on the side, I'm not sure. I'll have to go back and have a look at the, the photos. As I say, if I find them that I was using for reference, I'll put them in the video. Um, but then we have um, four um, buffer heads, so these are all turned brass. Um, so I did these on the lathe. I think I did like five or six before I got the ones that I was happy with, but these replaced the plastic ones. So if I can find a, a plastic one, you'll see that a plastic one is just a um, essentially a circular black plastic disc on a on a on a pin. Um, they're not particularly detailed, whereas these have um, the they're basically um, I think on the original they're kind of like wooden with a metal rim around the edge, and the metal rim isn't quite the 
same depth as the as the block. Um, so yeah, I'll have to paint those up. But they were they were turned on the lathe. Um, so that's that's quite nice. Another another bit that's kind of me adding the detailing rather than um, just just fitting the kit parts as it were. Um, as well, I like building a kit. I do like kind of the the challenge sometimes of fabricating the the parts myself. Um, so I also did that on another bit of the cab. Um, I obviously haven't decided which of these I'm using yet, but these, um, if you can see that, um, are um, the surrounds for the windows on the cab. These are the brass surrounds. So again. These, it's, as I say, it's a bit difficult to see because they're tiny, um, but they're uh, essentially a turned on the lathe uh, from around bra just round brass bar, um, so a hole through the middle of the right size, and then they're turned with a with a light, slight lip on the outside, so they actually kind of fit into the cab and push push through the holes in the cab and then leave the right kind of size surround. And I think I turned way more than four of those, so I'll have to work out um, exactly which ones I need. Um, I think there might be some parts missing because I'm sure that I'd put oh no 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 it's not missing it's just I thought I'd um I couldn't see it um so this is one of the lamps uh for the loco and what I've actually done is is put a piece on the back um that's actually kind of um like a little <sighs> fixing bracket on the back of the lamp essentially which means I can actually fit it on the back or the front of the loco and take it on and off it's actually detachable Probably stupid because I'll probably lose it quite quickly, but um, that's just one of those bits and pieces. Um, I've got a driver figure that I think uh, fits in the cab and works reasonably well. We'll have to see when he's painted up. I might might change him. There are better alternatives than when I started started doing this. Um, and then yeah, we've got things like I think these yeah these are the handles either side of the door. So this is for the left side of the loco obviously sized and um and matched i obviously didn't label the right hand side when i was right i've just um labeled the left hand one um and yeah then there's a whole bunch of random screws and stuff for reassembling this um so yeah it looks like i actually got a lot further than i thought i did uh, most of the detail so obviously all the detail pieces i think are made the the buffers the the hand the the handrails the window surrounds are all are all done and made um, and I got primer on the body so it looks like I stopped when I needed to um, pick a base colour and, and paint this um, and that's probably one of those cases where when I started this I don't know if I'd bought the airbrush and if I had I'd certainly not used it very often so I was probably worried about painting this with rattle cans or whatever. Uh, now. Don't get me wrong, I'm still scared of using the airbrush and messing things up. Um, but it probably means I just need to settle on a colour and paint. Um, and I can probably move this on quite a bit quickly. Um, so I think my plan was to do a dark greenish livery, I think. Again, I will go back and check the, the reference notes uh, when I can find them. Um, so it'll be, I think, these the the... the what's left of the footplate and running boards will be black um cab will be green um probably with some kind of um ivory upper on the inside um because that makes it easier for the driver it's not quite so dark and gloomy and um easier for them to see if it's kind of an off-white uh color and then this will be the most complicated piece to paint because um, obviously the smoke box and chimney will be black um, and I'm not sure about the boiler barrel at the back here behind the saddle tank um, as to what colour that actually is so what I might end up having to do is kind of paint this black and then mask off to paint the saddle tank green and the bunker the kind of sides of the water tanks uh, but not water tanks the coal bunker and, and, and stuff side of the, the basically the bottom half of the cab uh, no it's not the bottom half of the cab is it is the sides of the well it's kind of the sides of the cabin anyway this bit um green um because all the inside at the bottom here probably needs to be black so i may just go ahead and paint i mean it's had a gray primer but it may need just um a black primer on on here um I have to decide whether then do a black primer on the cab as well so when i spray the spray the green um, they match, which 
which might have to might complicate things slightly but you know there we go but yeah so i think this is going to be the new plan um essentially um try and reassemble um so it looks closer to scalloway than it does this bunch of bits but hopefully um a proper model of of um of Teledin. i mean it's a shame to keep it as a set of bits these models weren't obviously aren't cheap um and um, yeah it'd be nice to have it have it back together uh, the plan was that at some point i would probably build some kind of small layout for my for my son um using scarlet i also have um the other models that batman have released in the range um two of most of them i don't have two of rusty i wasn't particularly interested in doing anything with with rusty it's not it's not a particularly prototypical model although the chassis itself is a really nice runner um but i have some i have the other the other um steam locos um one of which is also also slightly in bits because i took it to bits to uh to help design another narrow planet detailing kit um i think for um dolgok i think i can't remember which one it was now anyway i'll there again in another box somewhere um but yeah so um so yeah hopefully this is the next project i think i'm going to try and complete get another one another one completed and done um and hopefully um yeah shouldn't i don't think it should take too long it'd be nice to get another one ticked off the list um i don't think there's a huge amount of of work involved here but every time i say that with something like ivo i end up taking you know six months to move on to the next bit um i don't have a history of finishing models quickly um so we shall see but that's the that's the plan so um if you're interested in seeing this become talilin um subscribe um, and um, yeah, hopefully there should be another update soon-ish.